Hi friends, Sarah here from Sunset Bow. Um, doing a video that I've actually kind of had on my mind for a long time. Um, I've noticed some folks who were, have been doing Ethany's uh, 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. There was a great prompt uh, about misunderstood tarot cards. Um, and I've seen a lot of great videos um, about misunderstood tarot cards, but I've actually had on my mind to do this particular video for quite a long time because um, I want to talk about the sevens in tarot. And part of that is because I've had some experiences in doing readings that have really made me um, think about how I interpret these cards and look at different ways of interpreting these cards. Um, and I do see seven as kind of one of the trickiest numbers um, in tarot. Um, and so I just felt like it would be interesting to sort of kind of go over, you know, what I think about these cards, take a look at some of the different interpretations by different artists um, of these cards that sort of lean more toward one interpretation or the other, and, uh, you know, sort of discuss what I prefer and some of the experiences that I've had uh, in interpreting these cards in certain contexts. So um, the first card that I wanted to talk about is the Seven of Swords. Um, and the Seven of Swords, honestly, to me, I personally think is one of the most misunderstood cards in tarot. Um, because I, I see a lot of different uh, resources when they talk about the Seven of Swords kind of only give it one angle, which is they really only give it a dark angle. They only give it a negative angle. This guy, he's snuck into this camp and he's stealing swords, <laughs> right? And there are so many interpretations of that that really just lean so heavily on the, well, it's theft, right? You know, it's very like Javert kind of <laughs> one-sided view of theft. Um, you know, it's, it's sneaky, it's deception, you know, he's, he's trying to get away with something and all of that is bad. And, um, I honestly, I don't see the seven of swords that way all the time. It can mean that, but I have multiple times in my life, like three plus three times that I can think of. And I know there's been more times than that done a reading for somebody where the seven of swords meant that they needed to get what was theirs, right? And when I think about the way that this is, that this is, um, that this is laid out here, you know, this guy, he's sneaking into this camp full of tents, right? And where do you see tents? You see tents in a war camp. Um, the, the people on the other side, on the other side of this, he's stealing the swords from, it's not like they're innocent in this. You know, what I'm seeing here is that this is the midst of a conflict and sure. Yeah. From the perspective of these folks in the tents, what he's doing is really sneaky and underhanded from the perspective of the people he's heading back to who are maybe on the other side of this war. Maybe he's a hero. Maybe the swords were stolen from their side in the first place. Maybe they're the side that's on the right side in this war. Maybe the side is the side that's attacking them. We don't, we don't know. And so I feel like giving this always a negative spin is really limiting. And, and so I mentioned that I, I had, um, you know, done some readings in my life where I've seen this, um, you know, interpreted in some different ways. And I don't want to get into too many specifics, obviously, but I have had this card come up multiple times in readings um, where a person was needing to get away from a relationship where they were potentially in danger, if not physical danger, then in danger of emotional abuse. Um, and the message of the card was very clearly take what you need and get the hell out, right? And the, these were people who, um, you know, maybe weren't giving themselves um, everything that they were entitled to in that relationship. You know, they were, they were only giving away. They were never taking what was actually theirs. And there were situations where, you know, even sometimes physical belongings um, in that relationship were being sort of taken away from them and used as a an emotional weapon in the relationship and the message of the card was very clearly steal that thing back <laughs> you know that don't let this thing be taken away from you and used as a weapon against you take it back um and so and i and i see that similarly here and especially considering that swords can be weapons you know um the fact that this guy is stealing the swords he's stealing something that very likely might be used against him tomorrow as a weapon um, and so I kind of wanted to go through some 
of the different um, cards, you know, and the different takes on the Seven of Swords because a lot of different cards have very different takes that suggest very different things and the creators definitely suggest very different things. So I kind of wanted to go through that a little bit. Obviously here um, we have the Vintage Pam, so this is the Rider Waite Smith uh, illustration just aged up a little bit. But the next card that I have here is the Seven of Swords from the Everyday Witch. And I find this one really, really interesting because it doesn't necessarily, again, suggest a value judgment. Um, we don't know what this person's relationship is with whoever owns this house that they're taking the swords from. Um, and I actually, I didn't include it in this video, but the Seven of Swords in particular, I always think of the Seven of Swords in the Game of Thrones tarot, which shows Sam, um, this, a character Sam, who has a horrible father, um, stealing a sword from his father that is actually his by birthright, but because his father doesn't approve of him, um, he's withholding this sword that should be his as, as the firstborn son, and his father is just a real dick <laughs> and won't let him have this sword because he prefers his athletic um, younger brother um, to Sam, who's very bookish and, um, and not particularly athletic. Um, and that, to me, is an absolute perfect encapsulation of some of the experiences that I've had with the Seven of Swords, where it really is a situation where it's being used as a weapon in a relationship, and it's th it actually belongs to the person who is shown in the card taking it, and they're doing the right thing by taking it. Um, so again, I feel like it's a bit ambiguous in the Everyday Witch as to what the relationship is here. Um, I do like that the Anima Mundi, what it shows here is a raven. Now, if you read the little guidebook that, that uh, the artist here wrote, um, I, it, it definitely suggests that, um, you know, that basically the main message of this card is sneakiness, deception, underhandedness. Um, but I like to read it differently because, again, you know, ravens are unbelievably intelligent birds. And um, sometimes the smart thing to do is to take back the weapons that might be used against you. Um, and so, again, I feel like this can be given a more ambiguous spin, and I really like that. This is the Seven of Swords from the Raven's Prophecy. Um, in this in this deck, um, all of the swords uh, suits are illustrated with hands. And this one, I feel like in particular, I mean, I like this card because I find it funny, but in particular, you know, it definitely is kind of really leaning heavily on that concept of deception. You know, it's showing the crossed fingers, the, the crossed fingers behind the back that we all do if we're lying, right? And so deception is very much the sort of main message of this card. And, uh, you know, and that, again, that's not my favorite thing. I, I don't necessarily prefer that. And here in the Anna Kay, obviously, it's very, very one-sided um, of a picture. You know, this guy is like, clearly a thief. He looks kind of creepy and he is just heading out the window, not just with swords, but he's also stolen a bunch of like gold and jewels and stuff. You know, he's just, he's just stealing. And then finally, um, I really like the Seven of Swords here in the Fountain Tarot because this one to me is just purely ambiguous. You know, there's a hand and it's taking these swords away and we don't know who those swords belong to. There's no suggestion necessarily that this is a particularly underhanded or devious thing to do. Um, and so so I, I do really, really like this one. And I have had this one come up in a couple of readings where I definitely, it was very clear that a more ambiguous spin should be put on this particular card. Um, that maybe the person who is doing the taking is someone who has been maybe selling themselves short and needs to take a little bit more. And, you know, I find that particularly for women <laughs> that that can be something that uh, that happens, you know, where you don't take what's yours because you don't feel entitled to it. And sometimes the message needs to be you should take what's yours because you are entitled to it and you're worth it or potentially you really need to protect yourself. Um, so, again, I just I I really um, like when I can put a more ambiguous spin on the Seven of Swords um, based on the imagery and the cards, um, just because uh, I, I personally have seen it mean so many different things over the course of my life in doing tarot readings. And there are some times when it's actually a really positive message of advice for a person. So the other card that I wanted to talk about in this video, um, it's getting long enough, I think, that I'll make a separate video on the Sevens of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands, um, but is the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups, 
I've talked about this a little bit in, a, in another video I did. Um, recently for me, um, in the last several months, the Seven of Cups was a huge pain in my ass. <laughs> it stalked me. And it just ha so happened to be at the time that I was contemplating looking for a new job. So every time this card came up, I would be like, oh, clearly the spin I should be putting on this is the spin of every single one of these cups is a potential future. You know, every single one of these cups is an option for me that's going to present itself to me. And it's just all about me making the right choice between the myriad infinite choices that are clearly going to be available to me when I start applying for new jobs. Um, when in reality, the reality was that I was being quite unrealistic about the options that were out there for a person um, who has uh, my experience and what kind of circumstances surrounding that job would be. You know, like I was sort of thinking, oh, I'm sure I'll find a great job that'll allow me to work from home all the time and have as much vacation time as I do now at the company I've worked at for 10 years and, you know, make as much money as I make now again at the company I've worked at for 10 years. Um, when in reality, when you start over at a new place, it's kind of likely that you're not not necessarily going to be able to get all of those perks and benefits that you might have built up working at a place that you've been at for 10 years like I, I am now. And, um, and, and so again, you know, every time I would look at a different job posting and see that there was, you know, some kind of limitation of it in comparison to my current job, I would always sort of rationalize it away and think, oh, no, it'll be fine. They'll be willing to negotiate with me on that. Nope. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, so again, it very much, um, this card can mean a lot of different things and it can mean, um, everything from, uh, again, having that universe of possibilities open to you, or it can mean fantasies, illusions, being unrealistic. And I know now that the way that I should have been looking at this card every time it came up for me, which it did repeatedly because I was not getting the message through my thick skull, um, which was the interpretation that I was being a fantasist. I was being unrealistic. You know, I was having expectations of what options would be presented to me that were totally not consistent with what you would actually see in the real world. Um, and so, you know, again, I like cards that give you some opportunities to have some different interpretations and spins on this particular uh this particular concept so again starting off here um with the rider Waite smith version of it again it's the pam's vintage um and you know it's it is fairly ambiguous um the thing that i do find interesting about this particular one is that you know some of the cups have things like riches or a beautiful castle or a laurel wreath or a beautiful woman, you know, things that are wonderful that you would like to see in your future. Others have threatening things like a snake or a dragon, you know, things that um, might harm you, possible future outcomes that aren't good. Um, and then there is one cup that's covered um, and, and you don't know what's in that cup. And yet it seems like that's the cup that he's focused on, is the unknown cup. You know, he's focused on um, what he can imagine his future to be, even beyond all of these sort of potential outcomes that exist. There's this sort of wild imaginings that, um, you know, even he can't um, fully grasp the sort of wildest imaginings of his mind. Um, so, so again, you know, there's a number of different interpretations that you can place on that. Um, but here's the everyday witch. Um, and the thing that I find interesting about this is that, you know, when I look at these cups, there's this suggestion, obviously they're just, they're cups, they're floating in a cloud. Nobody in real life ever would see this. You know, there's a, a, a suggestion that all of this is just a complete illusion. Um, when you look at the everyday witch, I find this interesting, like this witch is in a shop run by another witch, and it's kind of clear that she's looking at cups of potion that could actually work, right? Like there are cups of potion that could actually bring her different things. Now, of course, is she sort of mesmerized by the one that seems like a love potion? Um, yes, she is. And, uh, you know, as we all know from Harry Potter, love and everything else that that has ever existed in the world of fantasy, love potions often backfire. But, you know, the suggestion here um, is that it is maybe possible that these cups can bring her certain things. But then at the same time, 
this witch has kind of a sneaky look on her face, right? She has kind of a sneaky look on her face like, um, you know, this what this chick is picking out is completely stupid, but I guess I'll let her pay me, you know? So, so again, there a, a bit of ambiguity here and maybe a suggestion that everything that you're seeing here isn't necessarily all fantasy. I mean, this looks like a legit witch store. I'm sure she sells some legit potions and things. Um, so here's the Anima Mundi Seven of Cups. And this one I, I, I do really like. Um, I find this interesting because, you know, what we have here for the Seven of Cups is basically all of these different bioluminescent animals. You know, like maybe a jellyfish is something where you can see it and it looks so beautiful, but y you can't really grasp onto it. And if you try to grasp onto it, you're going to get stung, right? Um, but then there are these other bioluminescent creatures that are potentially real. But again, we don't know what kind of threat they pose. Um, so, you know, the thing that I like about this is that it suggests that you may be blinded by um, an appearance of reality. Um, it's not that these things aren't real, but you may be blinded by the appearance of them into thinking that they're the sort of thing that you actually want when in reality there's something that you probably shouldn't grab for because it might be dangerous or painful or injurious in some way. Um, here we have the Seven of Cups from the Raven's Prophecy. Um, you know, again, the suggestion here is that there's all this different stuff, you know, some of it's good, some of it's bad, but there's no suggestion that any of it isn't real. So again, I see this as more of being presented with options and needing to make a decision about which of these possible futures um, you actually want. You know, there's no suggestion that what you're seeing here is an illusion. Um, it's just a suggestion that some of this stuff is dangerous, you know, like the snake. Some of it is maybe unrealistic, like this raven that's offering you the moon. Um, some of it might be a sort of something that's not really important or is maybe a trapping, like a crown or a string of jewels. Um, so it's, you know, it's it gives you lots of different ways that you can potentially interpret it as far as making a decision, but it doesn't really sort of suggest that unreality um, of, uh, of some other cards. Whereas here with the Anna Kay, I mean, this is all in reality. You know, this is just a person seeing a vision in the sky of some cups, and they're even less real looking than the cups in the Rider Waite Smith. I mean, it's like this person is hallucinating, actually. So, this very much suggests that sort of fantasy or unreality kind of interpretation. The Seven of Cups in the Textured Tarot, I love. Um, because it shows a house of cards. Um, and and this is very interesting to me because, you know, again, a house of cards is real, but it's very, very fragile. So it suggests that you may be building up um, a possible future that, you know, while it is real, is only going to take sort of the slightest breath to make it not happen. You know, it's 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 a possibility, but it's a remote one. Um, and and so I, I do, I really like that idea of it. And this was definitely the version of the Seven of Cups that I wish I had been seeing um, back when I was uh, doing my job search because this definitely is a, a version of the Seven of Cups that kind of makes it clear that you, you might be building up something in your head that's not really um, lasting or realistic. The Seven of Cups from the Mythic Tarot, I find especially interesting because, um, you know, this depicts um, Aphrodite uh, appearing to Psyche, um, who wants to win back the heart of Eros. So Aphrodite here is showing Psyche um, the different things that she's going to need to do to win back Eros's heart. Um, that's, that's the intended meaning of this as devised by the creator of this deck. And so this one to me is very interesting because... It's almost saying um, not so much here are possible futures for you, but it's saying here are all of the things you're going to need to do, and, and there are many, and they're going to be difficult to make that future a reality. And so I, I find that very, very interesting, and I think it's a slightly different take on the six, Seven of Cups than I've seen in any other deck before, so I really, really like that one. And then again, finally, here is the beautiful fountain tarot, which is always neutral. I really like the ambiguity of this image. You know, it's it's hard to tell here whether or not the cups are real or whether they're an illusion. Um, the expression on the woman's face, you know, it's hard to tell whether she's 
imagining or whether she's confused trying to make a decision or or you know what's going on here and so there's a multitude of different interpretations that you can place on this card um so this is one that i really like of the seven of cups so okay so that's um kind of my first take on um on some stories about seven cards that I've had uh, in my life and um, and in doing tarot readings and some of the ways that I th feel like um, there's a multitude of interpretations that not everybody necessarily gives the sevens and I think it's important to um, you know really sort of examine the possible range of meanings that you might see in the sevens and really consider some al alternate interpretations because I've certainly had experiences in my life where it was clear that you know, one of the interpretations or sort of maybe even the normal interpretation that you might place on those cards really isn't the correct one. And there's much more of a spectrum of meanings that can be given to that card. So, um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm probably going to do a separate video on the seven of wands and the seven of pentacles. Cause again, I just think seven's a tough number and I find all the seven cards very, very interesting in tarot. So, um, thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye-bye.